With the big game on the horizon, your number three ranked Cougar football team handled business versus Lindenwood Belleville on Saturday, 63 to seven. Six different receivers caught touchdown passes while the USF defense recorded six sacks, nine tackles for a loss, and three turnovers. Well, our defense did a tremendous job. We got short fields, we got the ball back fast. Only ran 60 snaps of offensive plays and scored 63 points. So that's, that's a pretty good deal. Um, you know, I mean, it, Linden was a talented football team. I mean, that defensive line uh, had a couple of Division One transfers. They had a defensive end. First time I've ever witnessed a, one of our wide toss plays where you don't block that end. Uh, and that guy be able to redirect and get out and make the tackle on P.J. Dean. And if that hadn't happened, that was a score. So, I mean, they, they had kids. They just haven't come together yet as a team. They could be scary uh, when they do. Thought they played a much better football game the week before at home against St. Ambrose. And uh, I think if we had um, belabored you know, the issue and, and didn't go out and get it done early, it could have been that way again. But we went out and uh, kids played hard and um, did a great job, got a special team block, getting short fields and defense uh, pretty much controlled the game. And coach was pleasantly surprised to see backup quarterback Clay Scenarius step in and complete seven of eight passes for 74 yards and a touchdown. I was extremely pleased with Clay. He did well. Uh, it's been a close uh, race for the next guy in between he and Jake Coker. We decided we were going to redshirt Danny Naylor. Uh, he's an outstanding talent. I mean, if you know, anything were to happen, he would, that red shirt may disappear. But I was so pleased with Clay. He went out and executed and performed and um, really did an outstanding job. Really happy for him. Everyone's been happy with the play of senior captain Monte McDowell, and it's been a long journey for the receiver from Ben Davis High School. As of now, going into my senior year, uh, it's just exciting, man, you know. Who knew, you know, I feel like I could write a story about this, going from the scrawny freshman that came in to now being a senior, weighing about 203 pounds, uh, being the captain, starting, it's just, just a blessing. There is not a player, not a coach, or anybody around this program that knows these guys that uh, does not have ultimate respect for Monte McDowell. He's uh, become a great football player. He's got talent. He's worked himself into really being outstanding. Um, but he is a strong leader and a person of character, and you just want to follow him. Uh, him being in a team captain role, uh, guys don't want to let him down because of the respect they have for him. That's leadership. And Monte points to the leadership of quarterback Nick Ferrer for the success he and the rest of the offense is having. Nick, on the field, he's our leader. You know, in practice, he'll get on us. If he sees you not running a route, you know, to the full potential or full depth, going 100% at all, you know, he will get on you when you get back to the huddle. And, you know, it's just pretty much, you, know, you don't want to let him down. He's out there giving his all for us. And, you know, he's going to do his best to find you. Like you said, if that first progression is not open, he will go from two to three to four. And, you know, you have to be there because you don't know if, you, if that route is open or if it's not open. You just want to give it 100%. After McDowell's red shirt season, Seth Coate joined the team, which proved to be a blessing for Montag. Even though he was younger than me, he was a guy that I was able to look up to. Um, you know, just seeing how confident he was in playing helped me out because there were some times, you know, where I struggled with uh, my self-confidence and he would pull me to the side like, man, you know you can do this. You do it every day in practice. Just use this, you know, this game situation. See how um, you do in practice because we were going, at that time, we were going against some of the best, one of the best defensives um, on our team. So going against other guys, you know, I just had to develop that confidence and Seth really helped me, you know, then uh, off of the field, he would invite me over. Sometimes we would look at film and 
or we would look at other college games. He was like, look, just how this guy's doing this, you can do this, or just how I'm doing this, you can do this. And um, he really talked to me uh, when Cam left. He said, you know, that's gonna be the road, that's gonna be you next year. And, you know, just hearing that from him and, you know, seeing the, the progress that he was having there, that really made me feel better about myself. When you add Akeem Kelsall to the mix, you definitely have a veteran receiving core. And these vets have welcomed with open arms true freshman Rocky James into the mix. It's all love on the field, on and off of the field, you know. When he came in for his recruiting visit and, you know, we took him out, you know, took him out to eat, uh, showed him around the city. And, you know, I was just hoping he could get there because I felt like that was a guy who I would gel with really well. Um, and then, you know, just seeing him having such good progress on the field, uh, catching deep balls, you know, he's one of the fastest guys I've ever seen. Uh, you know, he, he caught on to the scheme really well. So I'm happy every time he makes a play, scores a touchdown. Um, but I'm coming for you, Rocky. You know, you, you beat me in the yards right now, but hey, I'm happy for him because I know that, oh man, that's gonna be good for next year. Um, so I'm happy with what he's doing right now. But next year is next year, and the Cougars have another huge matchup with number one, Marion. Last year's regular season win was big for the Cougs. Yes, it, it definitely was one of the biggest wins that I've ever been a part of. Um, you know, just starting off, you know, as a team, we started off so slow, but we kept our foot on the pedal, you know. When we saw them let up, that's when we took the initiative to go and push, you know. We would come back on the sidelines, go to the drawing boards and see, you know, what mistakes we were making, um, see their defensive breakdowns and how we could get past it. Um, and to come out victorious in that game was, you know, it was one of the biggest things I've ever been a part of. I'm happy I was a part of that. And yes, Monte was also a part of the semifinal loss to Marion. So that will be the final snap of this ball game and very disappointing ball game for St. Francis. Oh man, that, that loss was tough. Um, you know, it was tough for me because I knew the guys ahead of me, senior, the senior class, they really wanted it. I mean, I really wanted it as well, but you know, to, when that clock ran out and to see the tears coming out of those guys' eyes, it, it really hurt me. Um, and I wanted it for them and just to know that I wouldn't be with those guys the next season after being with you know them for four years of my life it it really hurt and I just wish we could have did better but fortunately we didn't. But fortunately the Cougs have another shot at Marion this Saturday with a 12 p.m. kickoff number one versus number two just another big game at Bishop Darcy Stadium for 19 year head coach Kevin Donnelly. Oh, they're big games every year. Uh, we've developed a good rival rivalry with these folks, and we happen to be one and two this week. It'll be a great game. Probably the two best teams in the country uh, going after each other, and it'll probably happen again sometime in late November or December. Um, strong conference, obviously. you probably got about four playoff teams on this side of the league. Um, and you know they're a great football team. They got most of their kids returning from their, their club a year ago. And uh, you, you know our job as coaches is, is to teach our young men the roller coaster ride of life. You know you're going to have your ups and your downs, and you got to get prepared for the challenges. And uh, you know yeah, it was a great one early, and it was a bad one down there at the end. But again, that that's what we try to do. You know, winning the football games, man, that's icing on the cake. That's fun. That's what you work for uh, all year round. You, you work to get in games like this, one and two, it's an opportunity. And uh, you, you gotta do everything you can to seize that opportunity and make the best of it. But it's a teaching process. Uh, you know, I've had people say, well, how about the senior class? How are they gonna be? And I don't know, I'll tell you in 20 years. Because it, it, this is a microcosm of life and you gotta deal with the ups and downs in a first class manner and be ready for the next one. Um, you know, you live for the next down, you live for the next practice, you live for the next play, the next game, and you got to be at your best at all times. 
and the Cougs will need to be at their best to beat last year's national championship winning Knights, whose statistics and rankings reflect St. Francis. Even with a true freshman at quarterback, Marion's offense could possibly be more dangerous than it was a year ago. Probably so, because I, I think that they take the game and put it, uh, they disperse it amongst their unit instead of just putting it on the quarterback. Um, I think they have a lot of um, option reads, isolation reads, whether it be an RPO or a give, pull, throw quickly, get the ball out of their hands quickly. So there's not a, uh, a progression of decisions that has to be made by a rookie quarterback. That's difficult. And how quick you have to make it, you know, is something that is gradually learned. So they've done a great job in preparing him to do what they want him to do. They're a defensive football team. Uh, they're outstanding. Their defensive line is big, strong, fast. They move well. They're well coached. Um, get great linebackers. So, I mean, you know, they're a defensive football team with a great player on offense. They want to get the ball to. They've got an outstanding offensive line. You got a stable of, of running backs. You know, they're not going to drop off in the first four or five, you know. They're deep. Um, you know, that program is really important to them. Uh, they're invested in it, and uh, they're going to be competitive. They're going to be a good team year in, year out. So with the NAIA Game of the Week coming up, it's important for the Cougars to do one thing. We talked about that in our team meeting. You know, uh, it is a rivalry, and it's not just another game. You know, it's a big game for them. And you do have to keep it uh, so that you're at your best at noon on Saturday. There's got to be great focus, there's got to be great effort, you've got to pay attention and listen to detail all week long, but uh, you know, you, you got to make sure that you're ready for the, the kickoff on Saturday. So there, there is a progression uh, involved with that. Well, first and foremost, for the guys who were here last year, I just want everybody to remember that feeling that we had, um, you know, losing in the semifinals. Um, secondly, I just want to let everyone know, you know, Let's take it day by day. You know, we don't want to play our best, our best, you know, practice. You know, we don't want that to be the game. You know, let Tuesday be a Tuesday practice. Let Wednesday be a Wednesday practice. Thursday be a Thursday practice. And when it's game time, it's, it's game time, you know. Let's not play championship ball in practice and then get to the game and not perform our, our best. Um, so I just want everybody, you know, not to get too high or not to get too low when it's game time.